Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the final episode of VG Myths Season 3, Season 2, and Season 1. Again, for some reason. The season finale was originally going to be, you know, an actual episode, but after coming to the startling realization I might be bad at video games, that one had to be thrown in the trash. If you remember a couple years ago, for the Season 1 finale I ranked every episode based on the difficulty of the run. This video will be a bit similar, but instead of difficulty, I'll be ranking every run based on how much I liked both the run itself and the final video that came out of it. And for completion's sake, we'll be covering every single VG Myths episode, starting all the way from episode zero, going in order from least to most favorite. Anyway, no time to spare, this is gonna be a long one. Number 40 and number 39, episode 40 and episode 18. VG Myths seasons one through three ranked, and VG Myths season one ranked by difficulty. They're literally just clip shows of a YouTube series. What was I thinking? Number 38, Episode 14. Can you beat Ratchet and Clank going commando with only the wrench? I've been saving the going commando wrench only run for when I didn't have any other ideas and it really shows. This episode, more than anything, was a victim of writer's block. The run isn't as regularly challenging and interesting as the first games, which combined with my own lack of ideas to coalesce into the shortest VG Myths episode to date. The run really was a fun alternative way to play the game, so it's a shame it doesn't have a real VG Myths episode episode to match. Number 37, Episode 7, Can You Beat Super Mario Sunshine Without Hovering? While the episode is passable, in hindsight, I'm not that fond of the run. There are a couple interesting anecdotes, especially the game's finale, but my memory blurs on the rest of the game. It's just not that memorable. Number 36, Episode 6, Can You Beat Kirby's Adventure Without Eating? VG Myths runs can be placed on a sliding scale between challenge and novelty. For some runs, all the fun is in demonstrating mastery of the game, while for others it's about doing the stupidest possible thing you can think of just to see if you can. There's value in both, but I'm personally more fond of the challenge end of the scale. Kirby's Adventure Without Eating is entirely novelty. The game is already designed under the assumption you might not have any abilities at any given moment, making this one of the easiest VG Myths runs. There's some fun dumb jokes, but I'd prefer something with a little bit more meat. Number 35, Episode 25. Can you beat Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal with only the wrench? After the failure of the Going Commando run, this video was my redemption. My goal was to make a passable wrench-only episode. I succeeded. It's a totally normal episode. But now thinking back, I don't remember the run that well. I feel like it was fun at the time, but since it didn't leave a lasting impact, I can't put it higher on the list. Number 34, episode 23. Can you beat the Ape Escape Minimum Gadget Challenge? I don't regret the episode, but I feel like it's far from my best work. I find it difficult to decide how to frame minimalist runs for these videos, and I don't think I put enough effort into framing this one differently from the normal VG Myths formula. Not to mention, it's stained by by being unfinished. I was originally considering doing a follow-up video going for the All Monkeys ending, and even did one or two streams of it back in the day. It seemed super interesting and fun, I especially remember killing these tree enemies with ground pounds was way ridiculously harder than it should be. But then I lost track of time and never got back to it. Even if I did decide to finish it now, the footage is long gone, so I'd have to start the entire run from scratch. It's a shame since this is one of my favorite games, but if I were to do a continuation, I'd much rather move on to one of the sequels. Number 30. 33, episode 32, Can You Beat Death Stranding's Minimalist Challenge? Welcome to the passion project that destroyed my entire life. I loved Death Stranding so much and absolutely wanted to do a VG Myths episode ASAP, intended as the first episode of Season 3. Unfortunately, I hadn't yet 100%ed the game casually yet, which I generally prefer to do before even considering a challenge run. If you're not aware, Death Stranding takes extremely long to complete. I sat down for weeks, double-timing for max ranks on every delivery, and after that massive time sink, I started the massive time sink that was the challenge run itself, only to slowly discover the challenge was basically just Death Stranding without the fun. It took so long I rushed a much shorter run to fill in January and still didn't finish in time for February. I'm pretty sure my channel's view counts never recovered from the downtime. So basically, if you don't think I upload often enough, Go bother Hideo Kojima, it's all his fault. Nonetheless, as terrible as the run is, I love the episode itself. I didn't think I could rely on the usual formula this time, and you may or may not have noticed I don't approach the game linearly like a normal VG Myth script. Instead, I jump around between talking points, and I think this approach made for a much more satisfying watch, ending the video talking about the few magnificent moments that shine through. Number 32, Episode 20. How many bullets does it take to beat Gun? 
I look back on this episode fondly as the perfect example of a run driven entirely by novelty. Like, come on, game is named Gun. Number 31, episode 27. Can you beat a hat in time without jumping? I'd actually worked on this run a couple times since the game's release, but never got past the very beginning. Then one day, I suddenly realized, since co-op mode had been patched in, I could probably do something really stupid with it, thus breaking into a run that had thus far eluded me. And yet, eventually I found out it had already been done by at least one member of the Hat in Time community, suddenly meaning I was no longer breaking into uncharted territory. Which isn't inherently a bad thing, but it kinda took the wind out of my sails, you know? I had a thing! I thought it was mine! And then I found out I stole it from the neighbors. By the way, random fun fact. Every line on the spoiler warning gag is an actual comment left somewhere on my channel. I was hoping people would notice, but ironically, I never saw any comments about it. Number 30, episode 38. Can you beat Stubbs the Zombie without eating brains? It had been a long while since I did an episode for the novelty value, but if any challenge run is gonna be novel, it's gonna be for Stubbs the Zombie, one of my favorite cult classics ever since the day it came out. Get this, I've been saving the brainless run for Halloween 2019, then delayed it in entire year since I overbooked my schedule. And to my incredible amazement, the run was both tons of fun and entirely possible. No brains necessary, even on the hardest difficulty. A terrible idea executed perfectly. Number 29, Episode 5. Can you beat Splatoon 2 without firing the hero weapons? This episode is from very early season one, when the series was still getting its footing and I was going through some terribly uncomfortable growing pains. It was practically rushed out to satisfy demand after the prior episode, back when I was still doing one video every week. And even when the run isn't failing, it's honestly just not that interesting compared to the sister episodes. Number 28, Episode 10. Can you beat Jack and Daxter without collecting precursor orbs? Though not the first episode to be based on a pre-existing run, it was the first where I cross-checked existing runs for strategies mostly the whole way through. I think the episode turned out okay, but I borrowed so much it feels more like a book report. A nice watch, but it's not really me. Number 27, Episode 15. Can you beat New Super Mario Bros. 2 without collecting any coins? This run is a fun one, right in the center of the scale with both a terrible premise and lots of interesting challenge throughout the game. The absolute standout moment is definitely the finale, which is still one of my top favorite VG Myths moments in the series, fighting the developers themselves by trying to beat the game's playable end credits coinless. Number 26, Episode 16. Can you beat Dead Rising without killing any zombies? I love this episode, and I've heard a few people say it's their favorite too. The humor is is on point most of the time, largely thanks to Dead Rising just being an inherently dumb game, and the run itself adds an extra dimension to a game that's already super fun. I have to dock points though for not going far enough. As mentioned at the end of the video, I really wish I'd gone the extra mile and rescued all possible survivors. If I ever do Dead Rising 2, that extra mile is getting crossed. Not because I want to, but because I have to. A while back, YouTuber that guy Trav made their own Dead Rising 2 video that went way beyond the minimum. If you like VG Myths and Dead Rising, you'll probably be interested. Link in the description. Number 25, Episode 11. Can you beat Ratchet and Clank with only the wrench? This one is a classic. I'd gotten past most of the early growing pains and the run was consistently interesting the whole way through and had multiple especially cool glitch showcases. The turrets list bonus challenge ended up being a failure, but it was a pretty spectacular failure, which is always fun to see. This was also the first challenge run on VG Myths that I'd been wanting to do even before I started making my own videos. I'd been vaguely aware of challenge runs before VG Myths, but never did much of any, except for a silly little easy boring Yoshi only run of Super Mario 64 DS, which I loathe myself for never making a video about. Once YouTube, and thus challenge runs, became my main source of income, I finally had the excuse to put time into all the ones I'd been thinking about. Number 24, Episode 31. Can you beat Captain Toad without moving the camera? As said earlier, Earlier, this was a quick project I figured would help me fill in a time slot, as well as being a much more relaxing project than the prior months. Even if it didn't end up being interesting enough for a video, I could abandon it for another project quickly. Luckily, that wasn't the case, but it definitely proved an interesting challenge. How do you make a video about a challenge run whose gimmick prevents everybody from looking at the game? I also experimented with a less linear script, though not to the same degree as with Death Stranding. In my own opinion, it worked out great, and most of the 
video is still readable without directly seeing the stage. As for the run itself, while it sounds like a throwaway idea in any other game, Captain Toad is built around camera rotation, which made me personally invested less in the challenge and more in finding out if it was possible. I figured probably not, which is technically right, but only due to one singular level, which blew my mind. And if you were itching for an actual challenge, Mummy Me Maze Forever Cameraless definitely scratches that itch. Number 23, Episode 37. Can you beat Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories at level 1-ish? I think this episode marks a milestone as the first one where basically nobody complained about the semantics. Never mind, it still happened while I was in the middle of making this video. Oh my god! Somebody in the Strem chat actually originally had the idea for the word 1-ish, which was way too perfect to describe the run within a YouTube title. Plus, since the game doesn't have any built-in EXP Zero options, I also dodged being yelled at for the video not being a quote-unquote myth, whatever that means. I'm especially happy with how the episode turned out since Chain of Memories is one of my favorite games of all time, and I really wanted to do it justice. Number 22, Episode 24, Can You Beat the Rockman 8-Ball Only Challenge? It's hard to remember where the idea for this run came from. I'm not sure if I thought of it on my own or if it was suggested somewhere, but it was a wonderfully terrible idea. The ball in Rockman 8 has always been an enigma to me. The game gives it to you in the tutorial, as if it's going to be an important part of your arsenal, but it just isn't. It's slightly useful as a double jump, but like that feels more like an easter egg than its main purpose. What is this thing? Why does it exist? And what happens if I force myself to use it? Turns out, lots of shenanigans. And surprisingly, with a lot of effort, literally everything in the game that isn't explicitly programmed not to allow the ball can be gotten through. This one was a weird one, and I love it. Number 21, Episode 8. Can you beat Sly Cooper without stealing coins? This was the first VG Myths episode that wasn't about a Nintendo game, and thankfully managed to prove I wasn't limited to the Nintendo brand. While benefiting heavily from speedrun techniques, the actual challenge run is something totally new, and makes itself distinctly separate in the highlight. Flaming Temple of Flame, where multiple awesome-looking tricks are necessary to reach the goal. Also, really super fun note, at the time it blew my mind the run was even possible, but the speedrunning community actually pushed it even further. It's now possible to 100% complete Sly Cooper without collecting coins. Link to the current world record run by Alice at Wonderland Games in the description. Number 20, Episode 26, Can You Beat Crash Team Racing Without the Gas Pedal? Remember when I said I prefer to complete games before considering a challenge run? This this run was an exception. I was actually planning it before the game even came out, since someone had told me they did it in the original game, and I loved the idea. The very concept of beating a racing game without the gas pedal sounds ludicrous on paper, but Crash Team Racing's boost mechanics make it feasible. I was also excited since I managed to convince the right people to send me a review copy. I dreamt of even managing to finish the episode in time for release day, but I didn't actually get my copy until a few days after, so that plan was scratched. It's probably for the best anyway. Without needing to rush, the episode turned out great. By the way, I do have to point something out. A lot of people commented complaining that reversing still uses the gas pedal. Two responses. One, you know what I mean. Two, it literally doesn't. Number 19, episode 19. Can you beat the Cave Story Pacifist Challenge? This was the first episode of Season 2, and I think this episode made it a strong opening. With the Pacifist rule set, the entirety of Cave Story became a beautiful mix of bullet hell and puzzler. And I'm particularly proud of the end video plot twist. I know a good chunk of viewers probably scanned the video timeline just to check in advance whether or not I actually did it. Sometimes it's the twist everybody sees coming that shocks you the most. I also have a confession to make. At the time the video came out, I yet to do a single segment playthrough of the entire game. I didn't realize Curly could kill the core until the video was nearly finished, so I recorded and added in that part after the initial playthrough without any actual clarification of that fact in the final video. My thinking at the time was nobody would care enough for it to be even worth mentioning, but always regretted that decision and felt like I was being dishonest. I sincerely apologize and have since left a pinned comment on the original video and done an actual single segment run to atone 
atone for my sins. Number 18, Episode 4. Can you beat Splatoon without firing the hero shot? This one holds a special place in history. After the massive success of the prior three episodes, all three about one game, I was suffering from stage fright. All the world was wondering what I'd do next, and I was afraid I'd never be able to do any better. After taking a couple months to get my head together, I got back to it with a challenge in another of my favorite Nintendo games. With the groundwork already laid, this video helped to iron out and cement the standard VG Myths formula, a linear walkthrough of each of the challenge runs roadblocks with liberal dumb jokes. And thanks to DJ Octavio, it was a blast. Number 17, Episode 13. Can you beat Sonic 3 and Knuckles without pressing right? Yet another run I was just as shocked to learn was possible as anybody else, which is starting to become a running theme, isn't it? It's also one of the biggest changes to the game's identity caused by one of these challenges. Without the ability to control Knuckles' basic movement, Sonic 3 becomes a physics-based precision puzzle game. It's a major shame we can't go without a few left presses, but considering how far we had to push the game to get there, I'm plenty satisfied. Number 16, Episode 36. Can you beat The Last of Us without scavenging? I was so excited when I thought of this one. The obvious Last of Us suggestions have always been fists only, which is plainly impossible since several sections mandate weapon use. But collecting items is itself a primary game mechanic. By removing it, we get the wiggle room to use our weapons while adding on a game-wide strategic element where every bullet is a permanent loss. Imagine my shock and dismay upon discovering that not only had it already been done before, it was an outright speedrun category. Nevertheless, it's still an amazingly fun run, and I've even heard people say this is one of the funniest VG Myths episodes. Number 15, Episode 35. Can you beat Ratchet Deadlocked with only the wrench? As you may have suspected from the original video, Deadlocked is my favorite Ratchet and Clank game, and despite literally being impossible, it's also my favorite wrench-only run. In retrospect, I don't think it's a coincidence. Structuring the game around short arcadey levels allows for plenty of unique, clear, and memorable short-term goals with their own unique and memorable solutions. That structure usually means there will be one or two levels that don't fit the challenge, but that's a small sacrifice for what's gained everywhere else. Plus, I'm really happy with how the episode turned out. I was never at a loss for words, and the script is one of the best in the entire series. Number 14, Episode 0. Can you be Breath of the Wild without climbing. This is where it all started, and to be really clear, the run sucks. <laughs> There's virtually no difference between a climbless playthrough and a normal casual one, it's just slightly less convenient. And what kind of a wiggly hand rule is you get to climb as long as you pretend you didn't? But I can honestly forgive that, since it wasn't trying to be a challenge run, it was just doing something really stupid in Breath of the Wild for the sheer dumb fun of it. And the video itself, as jerry-rigged together as it looks nowadays, was without a doubt the best thing I had ever made in my life. Never before had I spent as much time on a passion project as I did with this one. I remember the second half of the video taking forever to finish just because I constantly thought about the music video portion, halting progress to go back and re-watch it over and over and over over, changing it ever so slightly to be a little better every time. To this day, it's still one of the most memorable parts of any video I've ever made. I don't think any viewers were prepared for this thing, and I credit this singular moment for both the video's success and that of my channel as a whole. I've contemplated doing another music video, but I never have because I don't want to force it. If I'm doing another one, it's gonna have to be big, it's gonna have to mean something, and it's gonna have to top the climbing tutorial. Numbers 13, 12, 11, and 10, Episodes 1, 2, 3, and 34. Can you beat Super Mario Odyssey without jumping? Super Mario Odyssey's Hardest Jumpless Moon, Super Mario Odyssey's Impossible Jumpless Moons, and how many moons can you get in Super Mario Odyssey without jumping? Hyrule Myth started the series, but Mario Odyssey Jumpless was the first real episode. The idea was mostly inspired from Poninkook's Mario 64 A Button Challenge videos. Seeing Mario 64 pushed to its limits made me want to try the same thing with the hip new Mario game that was coming out. And while I did do a casual playthrough of the game first, I did it thinking about the Jumpless run the entire time. And while I didn't necessarily expect it, I was not oblivious to the viral potential of beating a Mario game without jumping. 
This was a big one, and I wanted it to be a big one. Hence the ridiculously over-the-top vocal performance! You may have noticed I mellowed down over the years. The over-the-top thing doesn't really fit my personal taste. I want VG Myths to be about challenge runs, with some jokes on the side to add personality. Not the other way around. But God knows it got people's attention, playing its part in popularizing challenge run videos with the clickbait titles and thumbnails you all know and love. I'm actually personally more fond of the addendum videos than the original itself. They go far more in-depth with the challenge aspects, and the satisfaction of obtaining every individual moon is a lot more in line with Mario Odyssey's collectathon spirit. But regardless of how I feel about the run, there's also a certain sentimental value attached that's hard to explain. The finale of the third episode I consider something of a thesis statement for VG Myths as a whole. I've gotten more positive comments about that moment than any other. People who were inspired, who were helped through a depression, who just found it a little nudge in the right direction. That's how I want VG Myths to make people feel, and that's why, in the final addendum video, I made explicitly clear who's the main character here. Also, small update since the last video. An 801st Jumpless Moon has been proven possible by Olivier Moreau and Roblox 8192, specifically the Ruined Kingdom's Roulette Tower climb. I'm personally way too out of date to understand what in the heck is going on here, so don't ask me to explain. Number 9 and Number 8, Episodes 21 and 22. How many shots does it take to complete Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion Parts 1 and 2? At the time of its creation, this was the largest project I'd ever undertaken. I loved Octo Expansion a ton, but its nature as a non-linear sequence of challenge maps made a normal minimalist run a routing nightmare. Instead, fitting the nature of the game itself, I decided to go for lowest score runs of all 88 individual levels, with the final total being the sum of all best scores. I'm personally a big fan of cumulative high score hunting. The ability to incrementally improve your high score by simply doing better in any individual level, gradually moving that score closer and closer to perfection is super satisfying. Fitting this completely different run structure, I also had to find a totally new way of structuring the video. Instead of covering just the interest interesting points of the run, every level is directly addressed, with the time spent on each relative to how much I had to say. Though it's in two parts, and I did shuffle things around to give the first part a satisfying finale, I still consider this one singular episode. For a while, I even had them both on the same timeline, with part two partially finished by part one's release. Also, I should probably address that elephant I forgot to feed for the last couple years. Yeah, uh, confession. I didn't touch Inner Agent 3 even a single time after the video came out. I was planning on giving myself a break for like a week. And one week turned into two, and two into 500. I'm sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Number 7, Episode 12. Can you beat Rockman without getting hit? While every prior episode was only an accomplishment in the sense I managed to make a cool internet video, this is the first where doing the run in the first place is the accomplishment I care about. I consider the damageless run the purest possible form of a video game challenge run. You literally just have to beat the game, same as normal, without making a single mistake the entire time. Not only do you have to be good at the game, you have to be good at it constantly for its entire duration. And Rockman games, beyond just being some of my favorite action platformers, have the perfect formula to demonstrate damageless runs at their best. Manual stage selection allows for the player to route out their own path through the game, and each obtainable weapon gives one more potential option to consider in every encounter. Rockman 1 is a great entry point into damageless runs, since you can practically skip what would otherwise be the hardest parts of the game. This is something I'd been wanting to do for years, but knew in my heart there was no no possible way I'd ever be good enough at video games to achieve. Now, years later, I'm still bad at video games, but turns out being good at video games is really more of an optional bonus than an entry fee. Number 6, Episode 17. Can you beat Rockman 2 without getting hit? Just like the game itself, Rockman 2 Damageless is an ironed out, more robust version of Rockman 1. Not only are there more stages, without the pause glitch, you'll actually have to fight all the bosses. This is one of the few moments in my entire life I've ever been able to honestly say I might might possibly be okay-ish at video games, and for that fact alone goes near the top of this list. I'd also like to note this is another series of runs I've been interested in doing long before starting VG Myths, and given enough time, I fully intend on doing a Mr. Perfect run of literally every single Rockman game. To put it another way, no, Rockman 3 isn't dead, I'm just bad at video games.
By the way, it's time to talk about that other elephant that's been rotting in the corner. Yes, Castlevania is dead. Number five, episode 33. Can you beat Kingdom Hearts at level one? I seriously debated even allowing this run on VG Myths for a while, for the simple fact it's clearly intended by the developers. Ultimately, I decided it didn't matter whether or not the run fit into any one particular defined box. VG Myths is VG Myths, and whatever VG Myths is, is whatever VG Myths wants to be. Level one is the classic Kingdom Hearts challenge run, and VG Myths would be lesser for its exclusion. Thankfully, the episode proved the point. This is one of my favorite episodes, with some of the most memorable challenges and funniest jokes. Hopefully, I can live up to its legacy when I finally get around to the next one. Number four, episode nine. Can you beat Super Mario 3D World without jumping? Looking back at this episode, I'm honestly kind of shocked how early it was made. For a long time, this was my absolute favorite VG Myths episode and favorite VG Myths run wrapped up together. Super Mario 3D World is one of the best Mario games. Games, and Super Mario 3D World Without Jumping is a completely separate, equally fun game. Of all the runs I've ever done on VG Myths, this is the one I most recommend fans of the game take on themselves. Most runs have a lot of downtime, sections that are mostly no different from a casual playthrough that you just have to grind through to get to the interesting stuff. Jumpless 3D World has no such downtime. Every single level is an entirely new experience with new platforming challenges and puzzles to take on. And thanks to the Green Star requirements, you'll continually have to backtrack and reevaluate what you might have previously deemed impossible, figuring out new techniques along the way and always feeling satisfied when you make progress. Not to mention, there's a ridiculous amount of novelty value in the very concept of using multiple controllers simultaneously to get everything done. I can't stress enough, this is not just a challenge run. This is a new video game you haven't played yet that's been bubbling underneath the surface of Super Mario 3D world this entire time. Number three and number two, episodes 28 and 29. Can you beat Breath of the Wild's master mode without pausing? And how many of Breath of the Wild shrines can you beat without pausing? The original idea was inspired by a minimum pause task of Majora's Mask, uploaded to YouTube by Kaztelek. In that game, the pause menu is how you swap equipment, resulting in a really interesting run that I wanted to replicate in Breath of the Wild. And it did not disappoint. Whereas Super Mario 3D World became an entirely new game, Breath of the Wild has you finding an entirely new way to play it while still retaining the game's original spirit. Whether or not you'll be able to beat Ganon is a huge question mark, but every individual shrine you complete tips the scales slightly further out of his favor, and each individual shrine is a more open-ended puzzle than they were ever designed to be. On top of that, this gigantic playthrough has several important routing choices thanks to the inability to manually swap runes. One of the most memorable moments of the entire run was in the routing process before it even started, when I realized Pura's rune upgrades acted as an automatic rune swap, thus making three total runes available in Hyrule proper. And since the run was so interesting, I put in double the effort to make sure it had the VG Myths episodes it deserved. The run was so complicated, I split it into a two-parter out of sheer necessity, treating the general routing and every individual shrine as their own subjects with their own dedicated video. This run is my baby, and I will never forget it. Speaking of the unforgettable, number pain and suffering, episode 30. Can you beat Pokemon without getting hit? If you didn't think this one would be at the top, I have no idea what kind of of a person you think I am. This video is the best I have ever made because it needed to be. I mean, just look at it. You can tell at a glance how much more effort I put into this. I custom made my own HD quality background of the Pokemon Super Game Boy borders just for the aesthetic touch having them as the video border. It also cannot be understated how much Picaspri's involvement added. Just like Pokemon itself, this video has a perfect rival, building up to a truly epic finale. I also have to personally thank Picaspri for changing up his own lines with some much needed improvements. Let's just say the original lines were kinda memey. He fixed them and gave the perfect vocal performance. Also, don't worry, he didn't misgender me. I'm the one who wrote most of the script, I just wasn't out yet. And then, 
there's the run. Like I said before, the damageous run is the most basic possible kind of challenge run. So if nobody in the world has ever done the most basic possible kind of challenge run on one of the most popular video games that has ever existed, there's probably a reason. JRPGs and damageous runs do not mix. The very concept of the game is built around taking turns. You don't not take damage. Not taking damage is literally not a mechanic. I think somebody had suggested it as a joke on a stream at some point, and I thought about it for a bit and realized, wait a second, you always go first if you have the higher speed stat, right? So theoretically, you just have to always go first and always one-hit KO. Which, to my own disbelief, seemed feasible-ish. Once I realized there might be something here, I decided to make this the finale of Season 2. Before ever touching a controller, I had to route out absolutely every single moment of the run. Every Pokémon I'd catch, every move they'd learn, and what my stats would have to be to guarantee the safest possible one-hit KO against every single Pokémon sent out by every single trainer in the entire game to absolutely absolutely maximize the chance of success. I created a step-by-step -step list, constantly updating it for every new revelation, even wrangling in an entirely separate game that just so happens to be the fastest official method. Until eventually the odds refused to budge and I had my route. There was nothing left to do but play video games, and it was some stressful video games. I wanted this video out for the holiday season and was coming straight out from just having finished Breath of the Wild Pausless, already one of the most time-consuming and stressful runs I'd ever done. This was a failure of psychological self-care. I pushed myself further than I ever had before. The process of grinding up levels was terribly boring, and I knew if I got hit at any point, I'd have to repeat the entire thing and probably miss the holiday deadline. And worst of all, I'm an introvert. Since the run was so important, I insisted on streaming the entire process, and as an introvert, the entire time I was slowly being drained by the very presence of other people, the process of having to talk to them for hours upon hours and knowing they'd be observing my every move. Even when I took a break and turned the stream off, I was still mentally there. I was still playing Pokemon in my head. I heard the music and saw the battles, and yes, I had nightmares. There has been a decent amount of confusion as to why I do full game damageless runs as opposed to using save files as checkpoints. There are a few reasons. First, remember what I said about the routing. I had to route this baby for weeks to maximize the odds of success, specifically because the odds of failure increased exponentially the longer you have to play. Doing any individual section of the game allows for good luck as a valid strategy, and in a JRPG like Pokemon, it's very easy to brute force good luck. What's a very interesting strategy game in the long term is basically a slot machine minigame in the short term. Without checkpoints, you're being explicitly tested on your knowledge of the game. Luck is only a factor insofar as you fail to eliminate it. And then, not only do you have to route the run, you actually have to do it. We are at double speed right now. Did we use the X-Accuracy? Everybody tell me if we use the X-Accuracy, am I remembering correctly? Did we use the X-Accuracy? Yes, we did. We, sh we did. Yes, yes. No? Yes, we did. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes? Yes? X-Accuracy set? Yes. Yes. We did. Okay. Okay! There is no going back! Asprey is about to use Blastoise! Holy jeez! Horn Drew! Horn Drew! This is the only option! We have no more options! Even if I didn't use the X accuracy, I just gotta hope that this works! And I know I used it! I remember using it! I swear I used it! <sighs> I gotta stop right here.
and just say? This very well may have been one of the stupidest ideas I've ever had in my life! This took forever. I had nightmares! I had a nightmare just a couple days ago where I rematched Sabrina accidentally, where I had a level 6 Chansey out. It was horrifying! Why did I even have a Chansey in front? I had a nightmare where I stepped on a Caltrops. I already told the stream about that one. I had so many nightmares over and over where I kept getting hit. I kept getting into battles and getting hit for the stupidest reasons. And every time, every single time, over and over, I told myself in a head, in my head, oh no, I got hit, it's over. Even though I only got hit in a dream, it still counts as getting hit. That's how bad the nightmares were. <laughs> But fortunately, we live in reality. To the best of my knowledge, let's double check. In the course of editing this video, I've had to watch that clip a few times, and every single time, I am on the edge of tears. Let me make this really clear. I don't care if Pokemon can be beaten without getting hit. I don't care if there's theoretically some sequence of button inputs a computer could read that would make it spit out the game's end credits. I don't even care if I have fun. Screw fun. Fun is boring. I wanted to beat Pokemon without getting hit. Not any individual part of Pokemon, the whole friggin' thing. This isn't about satisfying curiosity, this is about putting yourself to the grindstone, shaving away every possible imperfection until, for one short, microscopic moment, you glimpse the diamond that's been resting underneath the entire time. I beat Pokemon without getting hit. I beat Pokemon without getting hit. Nobody gets to say that until they do it. And I get to say it. I beat Pokemon without getting hit. Something the world thought impossible. More than any other episode, this one is mine. I did this! This is going on my friggin' gravestone! <laughs> Probably a bit self-centered, but screw it! I'm allowed to be proud of myself here! It was a terrible, incredibly unhealthy decision, but not one I regret, because this is me. VG myths aren't mysteries. VG myths aren't challenges. VG Myths are you. 
And sometimes that means they're me too. Special thanks to all Patreon backers, including all the bugs Yugi has killed, Andrew Cyber, Mrs. Sekman, RB Drock, Anon42, Zon Zero, Chris Nay, Alexander Botkin, Anu Agrira, Vincent Hall, David20 Covers, Vincent YT, Alex Nelson, Yellow Alert, Lady Ashley, Lively Leader, The Quacky Gamer, Blake Long, Luminescent Dragon, Jason Nilges, Baxoid, Z Master, Praetor, Vape. Whether we wanted it or not, we've stepped into a war with the Cabal. Rory Kelly, Lane Robert Leishman, Liddy Kitty, Jace Harsh, Queen Sapphire, Crustacean Creep, Plum Sweater, Cam the Can One, Nathaniel Kalita, Procrastinating Destiny, Epic Evan921, Alex Likes to Eat, Yield Foreign, Super Super Davio, Ace of Hearts, Rundum Goy, Misfunctional, Xander Kozak, Celestial Cookie, 8-Bit Mistrevis, Gussios, Alistair Echoes, John Frary. This video is not sponsored by Crouton.net, Zoe, Multicore, Brandon Jessup, Aaron Bailey, The Green Scorpion, Game Champ says trans rights are human rights, Jorb, KK, Boom Boxy, John Miller, Star Captain Eli Shaba of Clan Ghost Bear, SNS Main, Dino Nerd Ghost, Christopher Gunderson, Curbs D50, Damian R, James Simon, Gap Alonzo, Wave It, Platypu 115, Sans from Undertale, Chronosanthium, Duero 25, Lumen Von Idaho, Britface, The Nonchalant Nacho, Bragger Jester, Kid, Very Gucci, Blue Boo, West 450, Riley Anderson, Chenzo, Neo Sandman 4040, Arc Holmes, Robbie Cohenstrom, Play No More Heroes 1 and 2 on Switch, What's That Noise, Drawn by AJ's Haha, -ha, Funny Meme Name, Salty Sweet, Slowest Game of Chess, Black, Waiting for White to Move, Fady, Officer Slard, Zith Hackle, I'm Game Champ, and I say I'm bad at video games, but that is obviously a lie, because I do some of the hardest gaming challenges. I love you, Game Champ. <laughs> Of course, they're right next to each other. Sinique says, hashtag land back, sulfuric boss. Mars Beckers and Dragon, Eric Baron, Sir Catmoose, Cyril. Talmadro, IB Mackie, Fyra, Shadowfire638, Silk Toyd, Amy Cable, Admiral Ampersand. Wesley Crow, Hi Ditto, Sodden Suzuki, Sylvie Winged Cat Girl, a literal cat. Grand Nero, and Am Fison. Let me know how much every video I've ever made sucks in your own favorite VG Myths episode in the comments below. Also, just for fun, name your favorite non-VG Myths video too. I don't have time to think of any kind of clever sign-off because this video was supposed to be short and simple and easy and then a week later it's 40 minutes long and I still have another video I wanted to make this month and get out of my house, finally! <laughs>